And then someone else is going to be like, oh, yeah, I created this thing on like exactly. some some old uncle's laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, excuse me. That was me. I'm the old uncle. <laughs> so it's like putting in and pouring in your emotion to a piece of work or a piece of art or whatever you're doing, but then not saying not tying it to I don't know, getting five million streams or something, yeah. whatever that it's is. Like, what, what question do you want to come out the womb to? What questions do you want to be buried to? What question do you, or what song do you want to like, I'm like, yeah, this, just use this song. It's the encompassing song. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, the chorus is like, every day is like a battle, but we'll overcome. I was like, ah. Yeah. Oh. Hey everyone, welcome to Here's Hoping, the brand new podcast where we dive into the theme of hope. When we need it, how we find it, and why we still have reasons to feel it. With me, your host, Jada G. Today, we have Elijah. Elijah is a creative consultant, writer, and DJ with 15 years experience in the independent music and art sector in London. I want to bring him on because he is someone who really encompasses London culture. He has been at the heart of the grime and pirate radio scene since day one. Elijah founded the blog and label Butters and has worked closely with artists from Skepta to JME and channels his passion and love of music in his DJing. He also writes about creative work on Instagram with a project called Yellow Squares. That is developed into visual installations, an album, and a lecture series. I want him on to talk about hope in regards to how to keep evolving our creativity, the future of independent music, and supporting art and artists around him. I'm so excited to talk with him, and here is our conversation. So, Elijah, first off, tell me a bit about yourself, your work, your background. Yeah, the TLDR, the short story, is... um, born of Jamaican parents in East London. I haven't moved very far from where I was born. I was born at home in a hospital in Hackney. Um, I grew up listening to pirate radio, um, got kind of involved in music with the grime scene, which is like a kind of MC based, uh, techno garage house, drummer based, all of this kind of stuff all combined. Um, got involved in the late noughties, we call it now, <laughs> 06, 07, 08, 09 via like a blog and then kind of became a DJ then started a label put on raves and then all the way through that I've just been kind of does this make sense does this work yeah. tweeting and asking questions and writing about the process of releasing music and in that period of time it's changed massively from releasing like vinyls then downloads mp3s and now streaming and then now whatever is going to happen next so yeah it's been like a long journey of the many different roles of releasing music yeah so now I'm like an artist I was an artist manager I'm an artist manager and all of the things in getting music out into the world. I get that. Yeah, that's really cool because I think when you work in the music industry, I guess, as a whole, it's not just like one thing. No. It's so many little things that kind of lead and step by step. And then, you know, many years later, you just have this wealth of experience and that you can draw from essentially. That's right. And most of it I enjoyed as well. Like most of it was just just fun. Like I was writing about music first. I yeah. um, was going to like nights locally, like uh, in Plastic People and like The End and all these like legendary clubs here in London. The, I didn't realise we were legendary at the time. I was yeah, just yeah, going because yeah. I just liked the music. It wasn't Believe like, me, it was ne- legendary for us in Canada. <laughs> we were like, wow, in London, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, but some of them were just like... I don't know, a bunch of dudes standing in the room playing tunes. But <laughs> how Isn't that got, always the case? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> at the beginning of things. And then it like then it gets going and gets good and whatever. Yeah, it becomes. And then yeah, eventually, I don't know, fifteen years passed. Wow. Which is crazy. Yeah. Do you like wake up in the morning and you're like, oh my goodness, how'd I, that happen? I realize when I speak to young people, and this is like one of the things that is keeping me grounded, when I speak to someone that's like eighteen and they're like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is good. This is a very like humbling experience. Yeah. Like I don't understand what power radio is. <laughs> what is going on? What, why do you play these big plastic discs? This like, music what is, is dumb. All like, this? Yeah. This. Yeah. yeah. This is very humbling. And do you ever feel like the same way? Like like in in terms of talking to a younger person, like what their genre is. Like that's how I feel anyways. I'm like, what what is this genre? I don't understand. Like. Yeah. Like I guess the reference points are just are so broad like before 
maybe one music was referenced in another, whereas now, uh, I don't know, things are influenced by like say Dragon Ball Z and this meme yeah. and this, or all of these collective influences that I'm like, oh, I've never seen um, Game of Thrones. So I don't know that reference or yeah. all of these things that are a lot wider than my world used to be. Like you just, okay, garage influenced grime and then grime influenced drill and like it was really straightforward yeah, now yeah, yeah. I like listen to tunes I'm like sorry what's the like meme or the reference here like <laughs> yeah. I just come completely over my head all I can do is like I think it's sick or it's not for me That's yeah it, yeah yeah much. I get you I get yeah. you um moving on to the yellow squares so like talk me through the yellow squares how it came to be the background of it all of it yeah so as we were coming out of like 2021 Things were opening up here in the UK. Um, we've been closed for like 18 months. And in my kind of like day job as artist manager, I was thinking, is the same thing going to function as we kind of working in before? Um, so I just started asking questions and I was mainly doing it on Twitter. And then a DJ called Jubilee um, said, oh, you should put these things on Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, oh, how do you put a tweet on Instagram? Let me figure out like a design way of doing it. And the black and yellow came from like my label butters. Uh, Brandon was black and yellow. So I was like, okay, like, I'll just write in black with a yellow background. Just started off. The first one was scenes going outwards is when it's interesting. Like all the different kind of ways like artists pushed in, yeah, different directions. Mm -hmm. And then when a scene is like dead or boring is when they all start talking about the scene or that's like all, all looking inwards. Yep. So that was the first square. And then I just gradually built up like just my thinking around that. And yeah, it was just kind of developed into an art project and a whole bunch of questions and a lecture and all these things. And it's just kind of like just me having fun and being, being creative. Yeah, <laughs> I love that though. Cause I think like for me personally as an artist, you're thinking these things, but you don't see it reflected out in the wide world at all. I think that was what really drew, like, drawn me to, drew me to the L squares, because it was, I was like, oh, these are really good questions, and questions that especially young people should be asking themselves. And it gets you kind of outside of the box of what you think is supposed to be, which is amazing. What is that? Was that the main purpose of it, or...? Yeah, it was for me too, like just working out what to do next with my like career or my journey yeah. itself. So it's like, I'm asking myself these questions. So when I'm saying like, oh, close that, make it the thing. It's also me, like I'm doom scrolling. I'm like looking at yeah, yeah. Instagram and Twitter and wasting time and procrastinating. So like a lot of the messages or the questions are to myself too. Mm. And my art, I guess the art responses are my answer to them myself. So it's like an internal conversation at the same time as a, you know, conversation with the rest of the world. Yeah, no, I totally get that. What are some of like the conversations that stick out of your mind the most? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. This yeah. isn't even on the on the list of questions. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of things in just the counterintuitive points of view. Like, so if people say, um, I mean, maybe in like British. Uh, logic it's like work hard you'll get everything and I'm yeah. like hmm, is that true I'm yeah. questioning like all of these truths like people say oh trust your gut I'm like mm, <laughs> what does that mean like uh, how what, what would trust in your gut mean in this scenario yeah. like and if you trust your gut and it doesn't work then what do you do yeah so I'm thinking like maybe like the second order effect of everything or if a thousand people do an idea does it still work so like I have like one post it's like social media is a canvas not an advertising board. Mm -hmm. So just use it artistically. And I think that can work if a million people are using it in an artistic way. Whereas there's certain types of content creation or communication styles that only work if it's me or if it's you. Yeah. And I think that that's harder to scale or harder to be like, oh, everyone should do this. I think like there's a lot of like uh, advice and stuff out there, which I'm trying to like distance myself. I'm like, I'm not sure this is advice. I think this is just ideas. Yeah. And just ways to stretch what this whole thing is like DJ and producing and making art and sharing things yeah rather than it being like this I don't know you make this you get this yeah type of function no it's really just yeah kind of questioning everything and 
I think especially like as for me, like as an artist, it's 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 very needed because I think like as you're going on through through life <clears throat> in your career, doing the step by step thing that you think you're supposed to do and it doesn't work out or it doesn't work out the way you want it to, et cetera, et cetera. It's it's nice to see those requ questions reflected back and. I think a lot of people need it, so. Yeah, yeah. and like the, the best answer for most things is like, I don't know. And like, even with teams and yeah. like all of the structures that artists have around them, it's like, oh, let's, I don't know, let's try. Yeah. And I that's like sick, like. No, that's good. And I think more people should take that on. Like just saying, I don't know, and being curious about it. I think a lot of people are scared to be curious. So it's I don't maybe know. publicly. I think like we all are like <laughs> yeah. as artists in in our own ways and what we're reading. Yeah, and no, totally. To. Publicly, definitely. Publicly people. is yeah. like no, that's a oh, good point. We've got to like be the expert. Oh god. Publicly, right? Yeah, but no. I think I'm showing my hand here like that. <laughs> How much I don't know, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> and then that that also helps people fill in the gap for me. So when I say like, I don't know something, people are like, oh, what about this? What about this? Have you read this? Mm -hmm. And listen to this album or check this podcast. And then yeah. I'm just getting inundated with like cool stuff all the time, new artists, new music, new scenes, or not even just new as in, it's just started, like new to me at least. Yeah, yeah. And new books are like, have you read this? Have you read this? Check this. And I'm like, okay, sick. I will never run out of things to enjoy. Yeah, and I think that's, I don't know, for me that's invigorating because like, I don't know, when I was um, doing my master's in, in academia, I remember my prof saying that the more you learn and the more that you know, the more you realize you don't know anything. Yeah, we're <laughs> infinite and ignorance, and it's fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's re really, that is the case. And the only way to kind of combat that is to stay curious and be active in it. So one of the squares says, if you come from a working class background, you know hard work doesn't always pay off. And you kind of touched on it earlier and I just wanted to elaborate more and if you had advice for people who come from a working class background. Yeah, I mean, first it was like just to detach the maybe the, the work or effort that you're putting into like from an outcome that's like, you know, commercial outcome. Right. So it's like putting in and pouring in your emotion to a piece of work or a piece of art or whatever you're doing, but then not saying, not tying it to I don't know, getting 5 million streams or something, yeah. whatever that is. And that's completely cool. And mm -hmm. like, that's a very hard as, like aspect to learn about this thing and like yeah. to move forward. Um, for, for me, um, I guess why I stopped, did that square and maybe even some of the misunderstanding of that in the first place was like working class i realized how much that was like a uk term yeah i was just gonna say <laughs> when it's so interesting to me because like i moved here in 2019 and that's like that's not a thing we talk about in canada at all like like there's some people who are more well off than others but also it's a it's a country of immigrants so everyone came like not everyone but a good chunk of people came to build something better than what they had. So it's such a different mindset coming here and hearing that term. Um, yeah, can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, exactly. And even even here, like sometimes I feel like I can tell two stories about my journey or my p position. Like I can say, oh, like I'm a son of a single immigrant uh, parent and, you know, living in, you know, a particular borough in London and it's hard and all that kind of stuff. But then I can also tell a story of like, oh, my mom like went to university and I had my own bedroom and I also went to university myself and I've had all these other opportunities just by proxy of being in London. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to amplify the other side of um, the privileges I've had too. Yeah. Um, whereas maybe the societal thing is like, oh, you're a working class kid making grime, black, well, you know, all of these like boxes. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm I trying get to, you. Maybe that, that post and maybe why I haven't gone back to it as much it's just because it just comes with all of this other weight about me as an individual which i've tried to like find the balance of the you know just being for everyone you know it working in canada or in sao paulo or in mumbai or in tokyo and then it being me so mm -hmm. it's like just trying to find that balance of the the, the two things yeah because um, no, i've that. tried to like make all, most of the squares fit or work anywhere mm -hmm. or work for a million artists. Yeah, no, I get that. I, I really relate to that because 
like for me, like on one hand, like I grew up in a tiny town in Canada. Um, I grew up in nature, which is a privilege unto itself, like growing up with wild animals in your backyard and things like that. And, you know, being able to go to the river during summertime and things, you know, um, enjoying the outdoors. But then on the other hand, like moving to London, I'm like, oh, wow, there's so many opportunities here that just living here would have given me so many different things that I would have experienced as a young kid that I didn't have because like the nearest town was like, you know, two and a half hour drive, you know. So it's it really I think it's 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 interesting. Yeah. Like in terms of working class, how to look at your background, how you can look at the different facets and kind of rearrange it to really like depending on your perspective, kind of maybe also on the day how you're feeling as well. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> just trying to find a way to be useful for everyone else. So like when yeah. I'm going to like other places in the country, um, I can see how to be like, oh, like you're, you're like you're London, <laughs> beneficiary yeah. of all the London uh, funding and resources and stuff. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I am. But I'm also trying to share it with you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like I'm just a beneficiary and keeping it for myself. I'm like, I'm just showing you what I've learned too. Yeah. And hopefully that's, that can be useful for more people than it was designed for. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. And also like going back on the hard work element, like, cause we kind of, well, we kind of talked about this a bit before as well. Um, but like what, yeah, like the concept of hard work and how that isn't necessarily what everyone should be focusing on. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. I think maybe with making art, uh, this is not like inputs in, outputs out. Yeah. This is not like mechanical, you know, we don't work in factories. We don't like, you know, put 10 in and get 20 out. This is not that kind of thing. And uh, maybe a lot of the arts education that I've by proxy experience from all yeah. the young people that I deal with still treats this as like a traditional career. So they'll say, oh, okay, like you do so interesting. music management MA. So if you work 40 hours and you should get 40 hours output and it's not really like that. And, no, um, it really isn't. <laughs> yeah, and I've tried to push back on that, like in every kind of opportunity. So it's not just about say like hours in. It's um, you know, yeah, no, it's not. I don't want to like say oh luck, but there's there's many factors at play that are not just to do with hours. Grant. I'm just assuming people work hard. Yeah. Right. right. So we right, all work right. hard to some some sort of degree. Like most of the people that have visibility are not slackers in 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 any way, right? True. Um, but then that's that's also not uh, guaranteeing any you know whatever people call success these days. Exactly. And that's not easy to take for for people that are used to seeing yeah results. Yeah. Or no, expecting exactly. like yeah, I've got my degree, I've got my music management MA, I've done my you know, 10,000 hours in Ableton, why am I not Tiesto? Yeah, know? yeah. And then what do you say to people if they're like not able to like, you know, they're like, why am I not, you know, at that point already? <laughs> yeah, so some, there's some things where I feel like just asking that question makes people look at everything a bit more broader, like for themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's not down to me to help them through that i feel like this is self-exploration type yeah. of situation so i try not to get into the individual too much because i'm not i'm not like a therapist I'm no, not like no, a, no. <laughs> like a, like a, an individual i'm like sure kind of people culture. come to you with those kind of questions like yeah or... and i'll say I, you know one of the things i can can say as it for my own things it's like i do a lot of this for fun mm -hmm. or for my own personal enjoyment i don't charge anyone for this work it's just a function yeah. of all of the other stuff that i do and if I did, then it, you wouldn't even see it. Yeah. So I do work hard on it. I do think about it a lot. I do put a lot of effort into it, but it's not also, um, you know, I'm not trying to maximize shareholder value or something no, from no. this project, you know? But And it's also like, you never know what, like working in music, you never know how the thing that you just genuine, genuinely love to do, how that's going to take off in so many other ways. It, it, it always, I don't know, it always comes back in some shape or form i find exactly and usually it's a people thing it's not like some number or um some sort of sort of traditional level of success it's like a friendship or it's yeah. an experience yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's a song that you care about it's some it's a bit of feedback it's like someone saying 
oh yeah, I saw that thing that was sick, like that inspired me to do this. Or when I saw your documentary, that inspired me to take this course. Or when I learned this, that exp that's usually like the deepest response that someone can give you. It's not like, oh, obviously when someone says your song is sick, that's still sick. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's like the what someone did with the spark that's usually more interesting and I'm yeah. like if you can get that response out of your work rather than some arbitrary like amount of plays or I don't know some sort of deal or whatever it's like that's probably what we're deeply like we're shooting for in our gut but again the, the courses and all these advice things don't really say that yeah no exactly I think it's definitely something I've really tried to strive for within my um, work and it's actually a really big part of why I wanted to start this podcast is because I wanted to connect with people because that's what like really brightens me up like it, it makes me fuels my fire and it makes me excited to like keep doing whatever the thing is you know so I, I really relate to that how would like so this podcast is about hope so I have a question for you that do you think and this kind of spins off of like the working class bit, do you think that hope and privileged are linked or not? Uh, no, because maybe if you are privileged then you just accept everything as normal. But when you've had a switch in your life, when you've maybe got something that you didn't have before, mm -hmm. then you notice like, oh, this is what it feels like when you make your first money or when you get your first car or when you get your first place by yourself. Whereas if that wasn't a guarantee for you, or if you didn't have like, uh, you know, Wi-Fi or whatever it is, or a laptop to get going, you know the big difference in your life that that makes you feel. So like that hope and that hope is like something that you can kind of impart on others. So I noticed like the biggest kind of like, uh, kind of philanthropical people or like kind of way people that think like that are people that came from nothing also. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or understand the importance of, yeah, that little bit of difference. Not like the big thing of like making a museum or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Uh, you know, funding a million pound thing where loads of people can go. It's like passing on that piece of equipment they don't need anymore. Yeah. And that being it, because that's when someone did that for them, that was the difference between them making the tune and yeah. getting to the next stage. And I've just, that that's kind of like simplicity that I just think is like, yeah, it's like, yeah, there's optimism, there's a hope and there's, you, it's like very tangible because you see in someone's eyes, like, oh shit, like that 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 piece of equipment or that piece of recording, that was the difference. Yeah, no, I totally, I yeah, I think that definitely served me like in the start of my career for sure. Like having those little, those little things that you're just like, oh, how exactly like you're saying, how am I going to afford this piece of equipment that is like you know worth so much money and I don't even have even close to that amount. And then someone should just be like, oh, yeah, no, don't worry. You can use mine. Or like, yeah, you can just like pay me when you can. Like, yeah, those things are huge, huge difference into. Yeah. For me, it started like I, it got me to actually learn how to, you know, spin records. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. This was like a big thing back in the day. <laughs> people don't realize that like even playing records was hard because like most people didn't have decks and like exactly. all the access to records was expensive and all this kind of stuff and now usually when people talk about it, it's like production software or little bits of equipment or microphone or or laptop like i've given away like every laptop i guess i've used i've always like passed it on to the next thing once i've um you know once it's hit the limit for me yeah yeah and every time the person is like oh this is so sick you yeah know? yeah and i'm like yeah well yeah, it's sick for you, but also you got to pass it on too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no, just, it's kind exactly. Of, kind of stop with you. You right? have to have to keep it going because yeah. that's I don't know, that's how, what just I don't know, it generates goodness in the end. Exactly. <laughs> and then someone else is going to be like, oh yeah, I created this thing on like exactly. some some old uncle's laptop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, excuse me, that was me. I'm the old uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have like put some respect on my name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. 2016 MacBook like, you kids Pro don't still even banging. know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. Um, just like going on to more like advice and such. When it mm -hmm. feels, because I don't know. It, for me, I've definitely been in that place where you just feel like things aren't necessarily happening for you. What would you say? Like, what would be the advice you would give them to keep on going, to keep pushing? You know, like how we were talking about how, you know, even though it's like you're looking at a wide array of things, a wide array of things, and not necessarily looking at that 
like success measure of like number of streams or things like what is something that you could give someone to focus on that would give them the yeah the need to keep going on in their artistry yeah i've stopped for long periods of time like in terms of creating stuff and just like enjoyed and just like learning to to enjoy things again and not mm. worry about like putting yourself in front of something or being a something and just go into things and go into a show and just see or reading or buying a record and just like re-experiencing everything for the first time or trying something new or trying to learn something and all of those like cogs that it kind of just gets you like it might just be something completely away from music it might be just going to the gym and like hitting the bag yeah and then you're like oh i miss music and then you just then people return to music and they're like oh i've got new ideas whereas i find like there's a time when people are having that struggle it's like because they're at the desk trying to stare into the able turn and it's like not happening yeah like well <laughs> we were, I was and like, part oh, of, I really relate. Yeah. And it's like, maybe like when I said close out, make the thing, it's like, actually, it's like sometimes it's just closed out. Yeah. And that's it. And I, I go through periods with this, with this project where I don't do anything for ages, but because I've written so much through periods, I'm still able to post and kind of keep it going. But, you know, I might go for a, a month without making anything that's worth sharing. I still like scribbling and, and playing around with stuff, but I'm just enjoying mm. now i'll just go to things and just um go to talks and um yeah listen to podcasts and just just take in new information and especially like i i, I was a like specialist in a in a scene or a niche scene mm -hmm. and a lot of my peers are you know obviously very invested in the outcomes of that particular thing yeah 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 and when when we have these moments i'm like yo like go to uh, I'm a piano show, go to like a house yeah. show, just go to something different, go to drum and bass, something. anything but the thing that we always do. And usually, people go, oh yeah, like I, I had this experience and it influenced this. I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, sometimes that's, that's, that's been the difference for me at least. And if, if you live in a city or if you live close enough to a city, then um, take advantage of that. Yeah. Because you, you're paying for it. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely are. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> As someone who lived in the middle of nowhere, you definitely do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, people that um, I obviously run into a lot of people that live in London, and it is expensive to live here. But then, yeah, if you're able to, like, one of the good things about London in particular, um, there's a lot of free stuff. And on, during the week, I just go to galleries, mm. um, be able to pick up stuff. And then you just see people, yeah, just take in... The, the environment that's awesome you're a really curious person yeah that's amazing there's a lot of it there's you, you can't <laughs> ever complete london yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still like it just making it out of east i know but i think i don't know i it's just i've seen it so many times and i'm sure you've seen it as well like when you work in music it, it's just i don't know people can really either think things are guaranteed mm -hmm. Um, or just, you know, you're just talking in an echo chamber, you know, to the same people who like the same stuff and everyone's just big upping each other. But that also can be like the thing that causes you to never get out of the box that you're in. And if you're, you know, aspiring for something else, whatever that is. And I don't know, it's just, yeah, I think a lot of people could take note of how curious, curious you are. It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I always say, like just most people, most people enjoy something else at the same level that they're the thing that they're known for too. Yeah. So like, if you're like I don't know, making drum and bass music, and I speak to them about reggae, they they love reggae in the same level. They yeah. love drum and bass, but they're just known for that thing. And usually, I'm like, oh, why don't you just do the other thing for a while? Yeah. Even if you, you ain't gonna make no money or anything that's crazy, just like why don't you just like learn how to put together a sound system? Just, yeah. I know, or to like throw the genre in, like yeah. in a set, just because you want to. Yeah, that's like what I do. Anyway. The first two hours of a, <laughs> of a thing, it's like this just going to be reggae for two hours. Yeah, just so exactly. you can expand. And yeah, I listened to that this morning, like Lonely Liston expansions. Just this song, yeah. Um, <laughs> Lonely, Liston, Lonely Liston Smith expansions, and it's like, oh, anyway, this may be like <laughs> <laughs> some, some reference you can put in. No, yeah. I love it because it's like I don't know for me. I definitely hit that point with my career because, like, you know, I'm known for house music and disco. And then there was a point where I just was like, if I have to play one more disco tune, I, I just I, I don't think I can do it. Like, <laughs> it was just I don't know. I think it was really after the pandemic, too. Okay. So, like, a lot of things were changing. And then 
you know, I was getting super into Emma Piano. I'm like, why am I not playing Emma Piano? I love Emma Piano. And I'm sure all these kids, either they've never heard Emma Piano or they love it too. So win-win. Win-win. And it's, it goes off. People really like it. Or it's really interesting, some, like seeing the people who don't know, like, what is this sound? What is this? And, and then again, it can, allows people to get curious and be like, what is, like, what's this song? I've never heard this kind of sound before or, or whatever. Yeah, like the know. you know, like good feedback is like you know when people say six set, you're like yeah, cool, I know. But then <laughs> the <they're, they're laughs> yeah. like best is like, what did you play at like 19 minutes 41 seconds yeah, of this yeah. set that you put on? Here? I'm like, oh, that thing, yeah. I okay, know. Then I know, like you're a yeah. proper nerd. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I just like, yeah, I love it when people are actually nerding out. <laughs> 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 so, like in all this, how important do you think it is to really do things in your own way, like your own personal way? Uh, I mean, it's just the easiest. <laughs> uh, a lot of my things are like coming from, I don't know if it's like laziness, but it's just like, this is just easiest to maintain. Yeah. Like, I'm not like pretending to, or having to dial into another personality. Some, obviously for some art forms, I think that's pretty good, but it's just the easiest thing that stays sustainable to just, to be myself to a point that I'm happy with sharing, mm -hmm. you know? It's not like I'm being my complete self, it's just, I, myself that I'm comfortable with sharing with the rest of the world yeah. that I feel like is useful, interesting, funny, and handsome, you know? <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, like, it's just, that, that's the limit. But I'm not gonna, like, I don't know, tell people what I do on the weekends or what I eat for dinner. It's just like, that's my limit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, like, finding that, that's taken me a long time to find, by the way. Like, I've been on the internet mm. for a long time, and some people crack it really easily, or like they'll put something out, out about themselves and then have to dial back which is understandable, but like I found my like rhythm of like, or my limit of what I'm willing to share. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and that's it. Whether it gets whatever, a thousand likes or 30, I'm like, it's, this is no stress for me. Like, mm. And I'm good regardless, because I've detached the outcome from the, the work, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Man, which is, I yeah, really again, it's like I'm not easy. I need to take a, some pages out of your book. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> It is taking a long time, but yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> no, it's good because I don't know, like to everyone else out there, like the, I, I really, I have a very hard time detaching the the outcome from whatever it is the thing I'm doing. Yeah. Like, but you can't get it straight away anyway. No, you know, you you know can't. this already. No, I know, and I still get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. I'm being yeah. real here. Like, yeah, like yeah. the ideas are like I'm um, like calling back your own idea. Yeah. from whatever a couple of years ago and they're like, oh yeah if I never even put it out I would even have been able to call it back exactly yeah um, and a lot of things are like that where it's like oh you're trying to get the f all of the benefits from the thing now it's not possible yeah like lifted in the weight oh look, oh, look my arm's not bigger it's like this is crazy no, it takes time it takes yeah. energy it takes you know learning yeah. and you don't even realise what you learn until someone maybe someone else reflects it in you yeah Um. so a lot of things I'm taking in, I'm not even aware. Like I don't know the things that I looked at today, or the things that I read, or the the the, the audio book that I'm listening to. There's going to be a day where someone's like, "Oh, how do you know that?" I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, chapter like, oh, five of <laughs> Empires of Britain. <laughs> that was like <laughs> listening to like subconsciously on the like on the way here, and yeah, like just give you give it time for your ideas and it to like marinate. Yeah, I like that. It's. I don't know. Life is long too. There's no rush. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, as I hope well. so. And yeah, have you ever spoken to like someone like super old, like above ninety? Yes. Yeah. I have. And you realize how young you are. <laughs> 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 yes, and also, I don't know. There's like, yeah, I remember my grandma lived to be, I think it was ninety four. Amazing. And she was just over it by the end. Okay. She's just like, you may not be here. <laughs> like, and I, I don't know, there was like a real beauty in that, mm -hmm. you know, like that, you know, you have lived like a long life and you've accepted the things that have happened in your life and you're, and you're good. Yeah. You know? I but I imagine like from now, <laughs> that could be like a good like 50 something years. That's like more life than you've lived so far. So there's like true. a long way. Yeah. There's like a long way to go. We might live way past these nineties and, and, I know. and, and things, right? Like, I don't know. You're the, you're the scientist. <laughs> but, I know they're talking a lot about that. Yeah. <laughs> about more, how we might live to like, I don't know, like 150 or something like that. Yeah. That, like that with decent standard me. life. 
Yeah. Like, like not like we're just going to be just, you know, you know, crawling to the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> we like live, like how a 60 year old is now. Yeah. We might be like that at like 100. Yeah. And just what that, that like imagine the raves. I know. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be dope. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This We're thinking like, about that one. Yeah. <laughs> The 90 year old in the rave is, it, yeah, it's gonna happen in our. I don't know. I've, I've had some like older people in raving at my yeah. shows. Usually, when people say older people, there's a lot of people in their 60s. This yeah. I'm trying to think. It was hard to tell this guy. He had a cane. Okay. I, I couldn't tell. He was gray haired. Okay. We're gonna have to Could have been, been anywhere. We need to do like this survey of like the oldest group of, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like a, a raving crew as well. Like, I, obviously, it's one person that's just vibing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough, but I, like, I wanna see in this next wave or this by the end of the decade, like a crew that is gonna be like together going to something. I love that. Like eight year olds, like, yeah. oh yeah, we're just like Like this is to, what we do. Yeah. This is how we vibe. Yeah. And people I'm making into space it. for that and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like into new stuff as well, you know? Like, yeah. like, like oh, play me, um, I don't know, the music from today. Yeah. The music from my day. No, no, they wanna listen to new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen. I if, think it's, so. if it's not, if it doesn't happen with this generation, it'll happen with us. It might be already happening. We yeah. just ain't, aren't. We're not at the right raves. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you went to a rave? On Saturday. Oh shoot! Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah but I, I went to drum sets and it was like, okay, let me just see it in action. I haven't, I haven't been there yet. And yeah, my friends I, are playing. I haven't been and, there yet. Um, it's on my to do list. <laughs> and I'd been to the venue before to buy like cutlery. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. an IKEA before. Yeah, exactly. That's a very <laughs> um, different experience. And yeah, it was. It's kind of like weird. Like ravers like gone in reverse, where it used to be in, I guess, big venues like that, and then went smaller, and then now it's got bigger again. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was cool to see, and just how, um, maybe some of the same music that I grew up listening to, um, a whole another generation is enjoying it too. So yeah. that's kind of cool. No, I love that. That's what I'm about personally. But straight yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things he put on the yellow squares, because I see them as post-its. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, no, nah, like I didn't realize it was a post-it until after someone else said it. I was like, oh yeah, like sure. Oh, because that's what I grew up with. Like my yeah. mom had like all these post-its all throughout the kitchen, just like random things. And then there'd be ones like on my door. Do the washing Yeah, up. do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close out, do the washing up. Anyways, for, so on one of your yellow squares, you said more people should DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I am so curious about this. Okay, it's if you love music, you should learn how to DJ. <laughs> okay. Okay. Everyone misquotes this. Oh. I guess me into trouble. <laughs> this is what gets me into trouble. It's like no, I want to hear yeah. more about okay. this though. And you know what it was? It began as like the pushback of passiveness, like uh, playlists, and just like say if you're in a coffee shop, okay. you're just hearing music and. I, Sometimes I'll be like, oh, what's this song? They're like, I don't know. I'm like, why don't you know? Like, don't you want to know that this song's sick? And they're just like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, because you didn't even select it. Because yeah. You, you, don't, you don't care. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, if more people um, bought, you know, took responsibility for what they're like taking in, then our, like our jobs as DJs and producers people releasing records would like be more enjoyable because there's the people are genuinely locked in yeah and most of the like um memories i have around music are very like social they're not like say like just big rave and drum sheds or fabric or stuff like that. those experiences are good too but it's actually in kitchens it's in the front room it's mm -hmm. in barbecues and all this kind of stuff and when it comes to like playing the music i'm like i don't want people to just look at me or you you want to relax on your like weekends off <laughs> <laughs> if someone else is playing tunes and introducing you to music on on your weekends off or nights off too, then it's like it makes it just a better ecosystem. It doesn't mean they're gonna again become Tiesto. That's my example I'm using today. I know. I think um, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just, but it's just like the deep engagement of music. Like, hey, like Jada, like, have you heard this album? Um, I've got it. I bought it. I'm gonna put it on. Sick. That's it. And uh, maybe like if you love food, you learn how to cook. If you love music, you learn how to DJ. Yeah. That logic. It's not become a DJ or become a career DJ. It's just having the, yeah, tangible care, love. And I knew obviously get the response that it did. The response was like, no, DJing <laughs> is reserved for the 
few anointed peoples of a, <laughs> no, you know? but it really isn't. No. I don't know. Yeah. I think like DJing as like you know being a DJ, it's not that deep. It's yeah. really just exactly what you're saying, like sharing music that you love. And if you don't love the music, then what are you sharing? Exactly. I don't know. I find that very confusing personally. But yeah, I guess a lot of people like hit me back with like, oh, maybe it's like DJs that are using it for their income or like they're playing bars and all this kind of stuff, which I get, which is like a different thing, which I'm talking about. But that's not the majority of the consumers of music. Like the consumers of music and people that are enjoying or like listening to boiler rooms and these mixes and stuff. I'm like, if you enjoy that stuff, then what would your boiler room sound like? Or what would your um, essential mix sound like? And just taking ownership of that, you know? Like mm-hmm. Just not feeling like you can't participate or have like a point of view. Yeah. And I think for me, even this, this even goes down to like the rest of the industry too. Like when I read music reviews, I always think, if I'm reading an electronic music review, I always think it should be like, what does this music go with? Are you just, oh, the hi-hats are like this or the voice is like this or the the content is this it's like actually wouldn't it be good to hit like read a review and be like oh if you actually play this with jdg's record or ron trent's record or uh Sherelle's record then it that's all this will make sense yeah. or you should play it at the barbecue in the summer like this is like just added more context and i think if you if you're not playing the records then you don't you don't think of that. Yeah. If you're just listening to it on Spotify in your pants, then you're only going to have a certain level of connection. But when you've played like a certain record in a social function, you can tell someone else, yeah, I played this at the house party or I played this in the car and it went off. Yeah. Which is a very different kind of interaction. Yes, definitely. No, it's, 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 I totally relate to that. I, I've had so many times where there's like a track that I really love. And I like, it's like my track that I listen to, you know, walking to the train or something. And then you play it out and you're like, well, that didn't go over as well as I thought it would. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like it, it's better in my head than in the actuality or the reverse, you know. Exactly. And that's like, I don't know, that can be, I don't know, it, for me, it really galvanizes my love for the music. When you see people reacting differently, no matter what it is, um, I just find it really interesting. I also just really like observing people and how. Yeah, and like some of that time that happens, like there's like someone in the corner, like it's oh it's got it's gone off to them. Yeah, oh, yeah no, like I love that. <laughs> you just see like the one hand like in the back, just yeah. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been there. I know. I love yeah. it. I always point. I'm like you. You get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's where that's where it came from. And that just that that post just keeps being reshared and like other like kind of big DJs will be posting it and, and talking about it. And most of the 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 DJ like, you know, visible DJ people have have been like, yeah, like get into it. Yeah. You know? Get get to get stuck in. And I feel like, oh that's 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 been nice to see. Um and for most of them it's the first interaction they've had with my work as well. Mm. Um and then yeah, if they go down the the rabbit hole, they're like, what is this? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, London, <laughs> what's, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> this, is a, this is a mess, you know? Oh, uh, no, no, Not like no. in a positive way. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for the last question, how does being creative, creating, being around creatives in general, how does that give you a sense of hope and a sense of purpose? I didn't realize it did for a long time. And until again, it's re- like reflected through other people's reacting to me. But now that I've kind of thought about it a lot, it's like this, there's like this kind of confidence building that happens when you're learning, sharing, having conversations around stuff and seeing people create and make things happen for themselves. Like I came up in the scene uh, called Grime and a lot of the, the kinds of artists and the kind of music that was being made, a lot of people were like, no, that's not gonna work you know, these people will never be successful. And like, why are you dressed like that? Why do you speak like that? Yeah, why yeah, do you, yeah. that, and all these things. And then I saw all these different kinds of success and all of these kind of different ways of it, like working, quote unquote. And over time I realized that, oh, like I was just around that organically. And it was probably just hitting me subconsciously. And again, building confidence in my own ideas. I always use like this, uh, 
uh, this guy, these guys, Jamie and Skepta, they like they have a logo. Boy, better know. <laughs> it's like yeah, I don't know people that. But I know. It's okay. There's gonna be Canadians watching this. They yeah. don't know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> but I like for me, I saw their logo and it looked as good as the Nike logo. Like boy, better know. And it was like the bat signal. It's like boy, better know. Like me, I'm the boy. I better do the thing. That was like my clothes that I make the thing of the time when I started. And it was like, oh, I'm not sure what, if this is even viable, but I should just, that's, that was my signal to try. Yeah. And uh, them in particular was like, yeah, you need to, there may be like a small window of like opportunity to just get it done now. Yeah. And yeah, those those moments, like I've been able to reflect and realize those were like the sparks to getting things done. And there's a whole bunch of them that are happening now that I don't realize are encouraging me to keep going and, build confidence and find other ways you know this is not like i became confident and then now i'm fine yeah this yeah, is like yeah. A constant it's a constant thing yeah yeah like i'm having to like tighten the, the screws with this with this um, body and brain i'm in constantly <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing that's yeah, a good thing 100 always growing and learning yeah and maintenance yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just on to our last last question what is your song that represents hope for you yeah, so this song is uh, Wookiee and Lane Battle. And the reason, I, I always pick this for any question that people ask me about songs. Oh, really? And then it was like, okay, this <laughs> fits hope as well. I was like, okay. It did. Yeah. It really like, does. What, like, What question do you want to come out the womb to? What questions do you want to be buried to? What question do you, or what song do you want to like, I'm like, yeah, this, just use this song. It's the all-encompassing song. Yes. <laughs> and the, like, the chorus is like, every day is like a battle, but we'll overcome. I was like, ah, yeah. oh, this is like, this is this fits this perfectly. too perfect yeah i know what i was like oh that's a good song <laughs> that makes sense yes i was snapping in the back when, yeah when you sent it and i was just <laughs> i think i was just lucky at the time when i first started going out this was like an old school tune maybe people would play at the end of a night yeah like as a like celebration kind of gospels like put your hands up in the air like oh, yeah, yeah the moment of, yeah moment for everyone and then i realized it was the same for my uncle who's a few years he's like 10 years older than me they had that shared yeah. moment too and then i took on that song and also played that as the moment too so it's like how many generations have enjoyed this this piece of music that they created and you know will continue many generations will continue to enjoy it and yeah just the words are strong the vocal performance is amazing the drums like uh just yeah there's not what you expect with that kind of song and yeah every time i hear it I'm never like mad at hear, um, hearing it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, you know? That, that, that means yeah. it's a good song. That's a good song. And <laughs> yeah, there's, I think, I didn't, so, you know, like when you take on a song in like many different levels, you're just like, oh, this song's sick. And then another day you'd be like, oh, the beat's sick. And then, then mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh, the mm -hmm. vocal. And then, it's the song that keeps on giving. Yeah, and yeah. then you're like the words. <laughs> and then you might hear it in a context where you needed those words. And then it takes on another meaning. Then, uh, yeah, like I said, I realized with my uncle and, and my, my oldest, they, they have the same connection to the song. And yeah, and then we're in, in another decade in 2024, heading to 2030. And I probably will feel the same in 2034, 2044 and beyond. I love that. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Thanks, Elijah, <laughs> for being here. I really yeah, thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for the chat. It's been lovely. Yeah. You can head over now to my Here's Hoping playlist, wherever you listen to your music. You'll find today's song choice as well as all of our guest songs for hope. So make sure you follow the playlist and enjoy the tunes. This podcast is produced by Mia Zor Spiro, mixed by James Ede with design and social media by Louis Litton. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in and listening. Make sure you follow us at all our socials at Podcast. And subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Please also rate us and leave us a review as this is a new podcast. It will really help us grow. So we truly appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we have. And we can't wait to see you for the next one. Thanks so much and see you soon. Bye.